this is Sandra from Source Outreach Ministries. Welcome to our new series, God's Love and God's Judgment uh, throughout the Bible. And today we're going to be starting in the book of Genesis. And this is presented by the Bible Talk Show on the YouTube channel. So check the series out each week. Thanks. All right. Talking about Genesis, the book of Genesis. All right. This book is uh, written by Moses through the Holy Spirit. There's five books in the Bible that are written by Moses. The first five books. And the definition of love, God's love and God's judgment. What is love? God is love. Humanity has always struggled to find to define love and is constantly redefining it. But God's definition is clear and will never change. States God is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always preserve, is a preserver. Love never fails. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8. And the judgments. At no other point in history has God's judgment on earth been as severe as the widespread as it was as at the flood, the flood, 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, at various times, God has judged individual groups and even whole nations. Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed when God rained fire and brimstone on them. God ordered Israel to destroy the Canaanites because of their sin. And Israel itself was judged by the Babylonian Empire when they were in captivity. Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD because of rejecting the Messiah, which is Jesus. There are many more examples in the Bible, but no other judgment in history was as widespread and severe as that of the flood. As such, the flood stands as a past example, bar none, of the fact of God's judgment on the whole earth. Just as he judged the whole earth with the flood, so will he judge the whole earth in the end times and none will escape you hear me none will escape we will all be judged for the good and the bad all right let's talk about adam and eve adam and eve he he made this earth he made everything and then he decided to put adam and eve a man and a woman on this earth so let's let's take a little look here god's love defined as benevolence and affection towards people the Genesis narrative is dependent upon a consistent display of love towards people. Starting with creation, we can see God's love towards people. In six days, God's created day, night, land, plants, stars, the sun and the moon, and creatures of all shapes and sizes. To top it off, he created people to care for his glorious and extensive creation. In these acts, we can see both God's provision and a perfect home, and an important job in caring for his creation because Adam and Eve, all they had to do is just live in this Eden, the garden of Eden that he, God made for them. They don't have to want for nothing, do for nothing until. And then it says, there are several ways to show love to a person. If you were to provide someone a wonderful home, a significant occupation, this is one definite way to show benevolence and affection for someone. And this is what God did. He demonstrated an immense love towards Adam and Eve in the original original creation by giving them a perfect home and a noteworthy occupation and caring for this new world. But they fell short. Eve fell short and then Adam followed. So the, the judgment that came on this. People didn't stop sinning after Adam and Eve. In fact, corruption continued so much so that Moses wrote, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was greater in the earth and that every intention and the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So when Adam and Eve, the, they were tempted by the serpent, which is Satan, to eat of the tree of uh, good and evil. This was the start of a sinful world. Adam and Eve fell short. They messed up. Garden of Eden now they had to take care of differently 
they had to cl be clothed because now they're naked because before they didn't they were like immortal it was not this sexual innuendo that people get if they see somebody naked they have a lust so now um this whole thing was ruined and corrupted by satan and adam and eve caused a dilemma for the entire world even through today okay and this says that in every intention the thoughts of their heart was evil so sin became so great that god decided to judge his creation through a worldwide flood god was so angry that he wanted to destroy the human race he had made he was just so disappointed and so mad and it said nearly every creature would be destroyed every antelope wolf sparrow etc all right that walk on this earth would be killed except those saved on the ark because noah found favor and and uh, i mean god found favor in noah and noah was pretty old too he was way up there in his hundreds and he for one year built the ark that housed the eight members of his family and two member two animals of every species i went into this ark and then um god then brought the rain he brought the rain and only eight people survived back then eight people wow that's quite amazing and so um but but because he loved the human race and because he found favor in noah he decided to allow some of the humans to still live and then once the flood was over then he, and then the water would recede after the raining for 40 days and 40 nights then life would start again the animals would come off the ark the people would come off the ark because they were supposed the human race was supposed to just take care of the world and multiply and grow that was as simple as that and serve god that's three things simple huh not so simple i guess all right so then we're talking about the serpent the serpent which is satan now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the lord had made he said to the woman did god say you should not eat from the tree in the garden and the woman said to the serpent you may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden but god said you should not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden nor shall you touch it or you shall die but the serpent said to the woman you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the women saw that the tree was good for the food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. Whoop. And she also gave some to her husband, all right, who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open and they knew they were naked now. And that they were, uh, well, it says God made them clothes. Uh, and then in the Bible, it says that they made clothes out of the fig leaves. So we'll see which way is right. Uh, I think in the Bible, it says they put together fig leaves together and made clothes out of lion skins for themselves. Then, while the Bible is not clear as to whether or not the serpent stood up and walked on all fours before the curse, it appears likely that... Um, like other reptiles, it probably did walk on its fours because after God saw what the Satan had did, he said, because you have done this and cursed, you're cursed now above all livestock and all the wild, wild animals and you will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. So then we could probably assume he was standing up, the serpent, and he was able to walk on his walk standing up but when god cursed him then he went on all fours all right the fact that the serpent was cursed to crawl on his belly and eat the dust of the earth forever is also a way of indicating that the serpent would be forever despised and looked upon as a vile and despicable creature and an object of scorn and contempt and that's satan you know it's just so the serpent or a snake is a replication of what um, of Satan is. He's a snake. He's a serpent. He's evil. 
He just wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. And that's the most um, ugliest, one of the most ugliest animals on the planet, the snake. It's just so, uh, it makes your hair stand up just to look at it. Okay. And then it says, why did God curse the serpent when he knew that is actually Satan who had led Adam and Eve into sin? The fate of the serpent is an illustration. The curse of the serpent will one day be the fate of Satan himself. So in essence, in the Bible, Satan is revealed as a dragon, as Leviathan, uh, Polyon, many different names in the Bible. If you study the Bible, you're going to see the different names represent Satan. The spirit of Satan is in these entities. Okay. And so in the end, Satan will be put in prison or in hell for a thousand years. But then in the Bible it says he will be released again for a short time. And that's real interesting to me personally, because we've enduring him for 2,500 years of him tormenting the human race and corrupting the human race and enticing the human race in all means, sexual, money, all kinds of things, trying offering the human race so that they will not find Jesus. They will not find salvation. They will not have eternal life. They will be with him in damnation and hell and brimstone fire and they will be suffering more than they're suffering now, just living their normal life. So I just, that one really boggles my mind. Maybe you too, but um, it's very interesting for us. And as we continue to read in the Bible, we'll see how Satan tempts many, many people in the Bible that they do bad things. And then he even tempts Jesus. We'll see later in the Bible, but he didn't, that didn't work out. So, um, and he tempts, Job, he, he tempts many people in the Bible, but they were strong enough to know that their love for God stood out beyond any measure and nothing could tempt them. So I hope that yours is the same. All right. There's another story in here in the book of um, Genesis. And this is a really corrupt uh, story of the two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. And they were very evil and sexually homosexuality was was uh, running rampant in these cities. This is really bad things that were going on. And it says in Genesis 19, records the two angels, two angels disguised as humans were visiting Sodom and Gomorrah because God sent them to find out if there's any good people in these cities. And um, Lot met with these angels in the city square and urged them to stay at his house. So the angels agreed. The Bible then reveals the sin lurking in the Sodomites' hearts before they had gone to bed. All the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded Lot's house. Wow. And then they wanted those men to come out because they wanted to use those two men and have sex with them. But they didn't know that they were actually angels. Okay. And so what happened? The angels blinded the men surrounding the house and urged Lot and his family to flee the city. Then the wrath of God was about to fall. Lot and his family fled the city. And then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus, he over overthrew them, those cities, and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities. And so in essence, they were, they were pleading with God if they could find 50 good people, 20 good people, 10 good people. There was no good people. Just Lot and his family said get out of the city and do not look back for if you read the bible lot's wife looked back and she died the rest lot and his daughters were able to get out okay what was the sin of sodom and gomorrah so we're talking about the sin involved homosexuality the very name of the ancient city has given us the term sodomy and the sense of population between two men whether consensual or forced. Clearly, homosexuality was part of why God destroyed the two cities. The men of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to perform homosexuality acts on what they thought were two men, but yet they were two angels sent from heaven to take a look and see what's going on. Sodom and Gomorrah was guilty of many other sins, but homosexuality was the principal reason God poured out fire resulfur on the cities, completely destroying them 
and all their inhabitants. To this day, the area where Sodom and Gomorrah was located remains desolate, a desolate wasteland. Sodom and Gomorrah served as a powerful example of how God feels about sin in general and homosexuality specifically. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at the great flood a little bit here. So the judgment on the earth for their sin. The flood of Noah is a biblical event that describes how God destroyed the wicked people and the animals on the earth with a global flood, except for Noah and his family who were faithful to God and the animals in the ark. Those are the only survivors. When Noah was 600 years old, back then they lived a very long time because uh, in the beginning there was no disease, no problems like we have today and had real longevity. God released the rains that lasted for 40 days and nights causing the flood. So God's love saved Noah and his family to give the human race another try to worship God and not the pagan gods. We will see later that they still did not stop with the pagan gods as it is still today. Okay, thank you so much for watching our first lesson on the book of Genesis. Um, I'd encourage you today to really search your heart Get your life in order. Give your life to Jesus. Don't be destroyed for lack of knowledge. Read the book of the Bible. You can learn about everything that's going on in this world and it has gone on, this, gone on in this world. The Bible is your guide during these times on earth. And if you choose not to do this, there is death and destruction for you. Satan comes on this earth to steal, kill, and destroy. May you make the right decision. It is in your hands. It is your choice. God bless. Come back next week for lesson number two. It is going to be um, Exodus. Thank you. God bless.